at what age did you become interested in sport? Um, so I had quite a maybe maybe an unusual kind of start in terms of sports. So I was actually born without my right leg, um, and I went to like a mainstream school, um, but it was I think quite difficult at the time because I, I wasn't super included in PE lessons and those sorts of things. So I didn't really have the best introduction to sport that you, you know, you might associate with an athlete. Um, so I wasn't really interested in sport for a really long time, literally just because I wasn't, didn't really feel like I was able to do it or able to be included. Um, but my, my mom basically had me try out a few different things when I got to like about 12. Um, so I tried to swim in and wheelchair basketball and lots of random things. Um, and so I kind of, I hated all of them. Absolutely hated it. I wasn't interested in sport at all. Um, but then it was kind of by luck almost. So my school had been invited to like a local, almost like sports day where um, local schools brought along anybody that they had attending their school that had an impairment. And so we went along and there were people there from all these different sports uh, with all the right equipment to try it if you're impaired too. So um, Tani Gray Thompson was there with her husband Ian and they had a race chair and they basically just asked me to give it a go. And it, like I say, it was, it was such luck really that it kind of happened the way it did. And I gave it a go and just absolutely loved it. So it's very lucky you probably had Great Britain's, one of Great Britain's best ever Paralympians, <laughs> they're watching you. <laughs> I know, I mean, there was a bit of pressure there, obviously. I mean, it was funny because I, like I say, I wasn't really interested in sport at the time. And so when she kind of, she she approached me and just asked me to have a bit of a go. And it was like, oh, I don't really want to, but you can't really say no, can you, when a Baroness asks you to do something. No, so. no you, no, you <laughs> definitely kind of, can't. Exactly. So I just kind of, I just gave it a go. But I mean, gosh, now thinking back, I'm so glad I did. Can you imagine? <laughs> Still, there still is that stigma, or do you think things are changing there? Um, I think within the world of sport, I think things are better than they used to be for sure. Um, there's a lot more awareness around disability, but I think in terms of everyday life, there's still a long way to go. Um, there's still a lot of places that are inaccessible. There's still an expectation on disabled people like I, I talk about this a lot so my husband is also a Paralympian uh, a Paralympic athlete and we talk a lot about how if you're disabled you 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 follow two tracks you're either expected to be a Paralympian or nothing at all and there's nothing in the middle and it's quite frustrating and so I think yeah there's still a long way to go to get in kind of disabled people more visible just in really normal workspaces and but I think it, it's not something that's going to change overnight, sadly. Um, I think it's just going to, you know, it's going to take time. And it's taken time to get Paralympic sport to the point it is now. So I think, you know, it's just about keeping pushing on whenever, you know, those conversations arise and not being afraid to have those opinions and make them heard. Because I think sometimes people feel like they are almost being a bit of a burden or, you know, complaining all the time but actually nothing's going to change unless we you know continue to speak up when mm. things aren't really being you know, done equally gosh that's hard but I think what the Paralympics does I think in some ways the Paralympics has a lot more power than the Olympics does in that it has a huge power to change perceptions mm -hmm. so I know the IPC put something out the other day that we are the 15 thing I don't know if you saw that so it's 15% of people in the world is, uh, have some sort of disability, yeah. which is a huge amount of people, right? But not 15% of people are included in the workplace or in all other aspects of life. And so I think that's something that the Paralympics has the power to do. It has the power to change those perceptions and allow people to realise that, you know, disabled people are more than capable of doing. Yeah, so it's, it's about what you can do, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so I think that in that way, the Paralympics almost has more power than the Olympics ever will do, because there's so much growth from there um, in terms of just the general public who are disabled. So I think it is about just giving that confidence to disabled people, too, even if, um, you know, the route into work or whatever isn't 
as easy as it might be for somebody who's not disabled it's just showing that those things are possible yeah absolutely and that's what this podcast is about as well it's about showing people what you know people uh, autistic people can do yeah absolutely uh, and, and empowering them 